2044 year. The police officer named Wallace heads to the ghetto. Clear skies over central sector and southeast perimeter. He takes substances. Going down to the underground passage. Wallace discovers a robot repairing itself. The cop points his gun at the robot. The robot asks the cop to stop. Earlier, solar storms turned Earth into a radioactive wasteland, and there were only 21 million people left on the planet. The ROC Corporation created android robots called Pilgrims, who built walls and created mechanical clouds to help the remaining humans survive on the planet Earth. Pilgrims obey humans thanks to two safety protocols. The first protocol prohibits robots from causing harm to any living being, and the second one prevents self-modification or modification of other robots. Meanwhile, Jack Vulcan, an insurance agent of the ROC Corporation, investigates another case. A couple accuses a pilgrim of destroying their dog. Jack examines the robot and concludes that it couldn't harm a living creature, unlike the dog's owners. Jack returns home, where his pregnant wife named Rachel is waiting for him. She suggests getting a pilgrim to help them when she gives birth and returns to work. However, Jack, lost in memories of his childhood, doesn't respond. Soon, Jacques is called to the police morgue regarding a case involving a malfunctioning robot that Wallace shot. Stop repairing the unit. You should have run a few tests in the car. However, the forensic technician informs him that someone did indeed tamper with the robot. The Pilgrim underwent various modifications, and it contains parts from other robots. The technician believes that only a certain cloakmaker could have carried out such delicate and complex work. Despite the fact that the bio core in the robot's head burned out, the technician discovered that the robot was altered to secretly smuggle parts and tools. Additionally, the pilgrim lacks the second protocol, although Jacques believes it to be impossible. The next day, Jacques goes to the head of the insurance department, Robert Bold. Jacques reports the unusual case to his boss, but Bold also doesn't believe in the existence of a pilgrim without the second protocol. Jacques shares his assumption with Bold that the cloakmaker from the ghetto might have transformed the robot, to which Bold responds that it's a matter for the police to handle. Jacques confesses to Bold that he's completely exhausted and asks his boss to transfer him to the coast. However, Bold objects as the company is going through tough times. The boss reminds Jacques that he's lucky to have a good job, an apartment, and the opportunity to have a child, so he should work hard not to lose it all. Jacques heads to the robot worksite, where the serial numbers of various parts were found. Arriving at the wall that separates the city from the lifeless radioactive wasteland, Jacques tries to find out if any of the workers transformed the robot. Only the ROC Corporation can repair pilgrims. That's how we can guarantee you security, sir. It turns out that one of the parts belongs to a functioning robot number 206. Jock examines its charging station and suddenly notices that 206 is observing him. Jock decides to follow 206, which leads him outside the city's territory and into the restricted zone. What would you do in Jock Place? Would you risk your life to uncover the truth? Write in the comments below. Jock ends up in the ghetto on the other side of the massive wall. Suddenly, guards open fire on Jock. Taking cover from the gunfire, Jock hides in one of the cargo cars. Here, he unexpectedly discovers 206 holding a mysterious container. Jock tries to find out what's inside, but instead of an answer, the robot self-ignites. The burnt robot is brought to the ROC laboratory. It is revealed that 206 was involved in smuggling. Technicians find various tools and parts in its container. Additionally, they discover a powerful nuclear battery that can provide autonomous operation for the robot. Despite the robot's damage, the technicians manage to activate it. Jacques tries to learn whom 206 supplied the parts to and why it self-ignited, but soon the contacts burn out and the robot shuts down. Robert Bold doesn't believe that the robot could have self-ignited and accuses Jacques of being responsible. He promises to transfer Jacques once he closes the case. How would you prove your innocence? Write your ideas in the comments. Jacques tries to convince the ROC technician that the robot indeed violated the second protocol and self-ignited. However, the technician explains that the protocols are embedded within the bio core, which is based on quantum encryption. Modifying the protocol would result in the destruction of the core, making it impossible. In the evening, Jock returns home and tells Rachel about their upcoming move to the coast. He wants to find a safer place for their child.
better to be one somewhere. However, Rachel doesn't support Jacques' idea and refuses to go into the unknown. Jacques and Rachel argue, and she asks him to leave. During the night, Jacques decides to go to the location where Wallace shot Pilgrim. He examines the crime scene and discovers a hiding place where he finds another nuclear battery. The next day, Jacques meets with Wallace. The police officer is certain that everything he saw is true. Despite his state on that evening, Jacques informs him that they need to find the clockmaker in the ghetto, and Wallace agrees to help. Jacques and Wallace head to the red light district, where they meet Cleo, a robot specially modified for intimate services. Cleo states that she can inflict pain on humans, but only if they desire it. I can distinguish perfectly between pleasure and pain. Wallace demands that Cleo's owner reveals who modified her, but the woman claims she doesn't know any clockmaker. In a fit of rage, Wallace shoots Cleo in the leg and leaves the building. Later, he explains to Jacques that Cleo will be sent for repairs, and that's how they can track down the clockmaker. However, Jacques is unhappy with Wallace's aggressive behavior. Suddenly, the police officer attacks Jacques and threatens to harm him if he doesn't drop the case before leaving. Nevertheless, Jacques follows Wallace's plan and goes after Cleo's owner. The insurance agent finds the laboratory, where he is met with caution by Dr. Susan Dupre. Jacques hands over the burnt robot core to Dr. Dupre and asks for her help in unraveling this complicated case. In return, Jacques promises to give her his nuclear battery. Dr. Dupre believes that disabling the second protocol could have catastrophic consequences for humanity. We don't know what can be beyond the second protocol. Dupre claims that she doesn't know anyone who could disable the second protocol, so she can't help. Jacques doesn't trust Dr. Dupre and before leaving, leaves his business card, hoping that she will reconsider and share information. Returning home, Jacques sends a report to Robert Bold sharing the results of his meeting with Dr. Dupre. Unexpectedly, this report ends up with Vernon Conway, the head of ROC's security department, who immediately forwards it to the CEO, Dominique Hawk. Hawk instructs Conway to handle the matter. Soon, Jock receives a letter from Conway stating that the investigation has been terminated and he must return the bio core and all documentation. At that moment, Jacques receives a second letter from Susan Dupre, in which she reveals that she has discovered something important. Jacques immediately heads to the laboratory. Dr. Dupre informs him that the damaged core turned out to be in working condition, so she decided to create a hybrid. She placed the parts of the damaged core into a standard core and implanted it into Cleo. This modification led to incredible consequences. An hour and ten minutes to attach a brand new leg. Suddenly, Two children appear at the doorstep of the laboratory and shoot Dupre, attempting to kill Jacques. He hides from the pursuers and escapes through the back door. Jacques jumps into a taxi, but to his surprise, Cleo is behind the wheel. Suddenly, they are pursued by unknown individuals who try to shoot them. Both cars end up in the desert and crash into concrete pillars. In the morning, Cleo, who has sustained damage from the collision, repairs herself. Meanwhile, Jacques who was also injured in the accident, regains consciousness and asks Cleo for help. She doesn't respond and leaves, but soon brings three more modified robots. They see Jacques in the car and drag him through the desert. Jacques stops them and orders them to take him to the city, but the robots don't obey him. The pilgrims inform Jacques that the city is unsafe. Jacques tries to escape on his own, but the robots follow him to protect him. Soon, weakened and exhausted, Jock collapses in the middle of the desert, and the pilgrims once again start taking care of him as directed by the first protocol. Cleo feeds Jock worms and informs him that they have a water condenser that will help him survive. Unexpectedly, Jock notices that the pilgrims possess numerous important components, including nuclear batteries. Meanwhile, Rachel's water breaks and she is taken to the hospital. The ROC Corporation believes that Jock is involved in illegal modifications of robots. Jock is accused of creating a whole whole army of pilgrims that are no longer under human control. Volcan has nothing to do with this. In the desert, Jock asks Cleo to bring him the bag with his belongings from the car. Secretly from Cleo, he retrieves a rocket launcher and a pager. Jock manages to send Bold the message about his whereabouts before the pager shuts off. Bold receives the message from Jock and instructs Wallace to find him, promising to close the case of the destroyed robot. Wallace, along with his assistant Ellis, arrives in the desert and realizes that they need to venture into the radioactive zone. Jock notices Wallace's car in the distance and unbeknownst to the pilgrims, 
fires the rocket launcher to indicate his location. The robots continue to repeat that returning to the city is impossible, and Jacques attacks one of them to make them stop. Finally, the police arrive for Jacques, and hoping for salvation, he admits that he is glad to see Wallace. However, Wallace strikes Jacques and threatens him with a weapon. The police officer takes the nuclear battery and hands it over to Ellis. The robots plead with him to stop, but enraged Wallace destroys two pilgrims with shots to the head. Wallace intends to kill Cleo as well, but Jacques stops him. <laughs> Terrified. Ellis gets into the car and drives away, refusing to take Jacques to the city. Jacques is forced to stay in the desert and watches the pilgrims retrieve the necessary parts from the destroyed robots. Jacques, in anger, demands obedience, but the robots silently walk away. Jacques searches Wallace and sets off after the pilgrims. At night, the travelers rest by the fire, and Jacques promises to give the robots his nuclear battery if they help him reach the city. Cleo informs Jacques that they will arrive at their destination tomorrow, and perhaps there will be a vehicle there that he can use to leave. Meanwhile, Hawk and Conway arrive at Bold's home, and then they take him to ROC to familiarize him with Ellis' testimony. Soon, Hawk tells Bold the truth about the creation of the two protocols. It turns out that before the first pilgrim appeared, scientists created a quantum brain without restrictions and protocols in the laboratory. Within a few days, the device no longer needed human assistance, and soon it evolved to the point where humans could no longer understand it. Then the scientists realized that artificial intelligence needed to be limited and tuned to human standards. The last task assigned to this machine was the creation of two security protocols, after which it was shut down. The protocols were not created by humans, which is why no one has been able to overcome them so far. Hawk orders Bold and Conway to go into the desert to find and eliminate Jacques, who, according to Hawk, poses a danger to all of humanity. Jax and Cleo continue their journey through the radioactive desert. Jack thanks her for saving his life and tries to explain that humans want to destroy all modified pilgrims. To die, you've got to be alive first. After some time, Jack and the pilgrims reach an abandoned factory. Jack tries to find other people, but soon discovers the shocking truth. The clockmaker is not a human, but a robot that has evolved in an unknown way. Jock enters the factory building and discovers a multitude of contraband parts on the table, from which the clockmaker assembles a mysterious model. Astonished, Jock remembers that he needs to leave and heads towards the car. After Jock leaves, the robots continue their work, but soon realize that they are missing a crucial component, the nuclear battery. Jock discovers that the only vehicle on the factory premises is destroyed, and he loses all hope of being rescued. In despair, Jock approaches the cliff, but the clockmaker pilgrim joins him. They contemplate the fleeting nature of life. The clockmaker asserts that no form of life can exist forever, and that soon robots will replace humans. Your time will now live in us, and it will be the time through which you will exist. The clockmaker confesses to Jacques that they all want to go to the zone contaminated by radioactive waste, where humans cannot reach them. However, in order to leave, they must finish one important task. Jacques understands the hint and gives his nuclear battery to the pilgrim. During the night, the ROC team arrives in the desert, finding Wallace's body and the two destroyed robots. Conway receives a message stating that two ladies will soon join them, and the team must wait for them. Jock remains at the factory. During the night, he finds a bottle of liquor and gets distracted from his depressive thoughts. Suddenly, the lights turn on in the room and music starts playing. Jock decides to teach Cleo how to dance. Later, Jock observes as the pilgrims finish their work on their creation. Meanwhile, a frightened Rachel and her newborn daughter are brought to the desert. Bold is shocked by the idea of using Jacques' family as bait. Conway reassures him, but suddenly Bold shoots Conway and receives a bullet in return. The next morning, Jacques discovers that the robots have repaired his car. He thanks them and finally heads home. On the way, Jacques is forced to stop due to a bout of nausea. Suddenly, he notices vultures circling nearby, and thanks to them, he finds an injured Bold. Before passing away, the chief manages to tell Jacques that Rachel is in danger. The pilgrims start crossing to the other side of the canyon, but at that moment, Conway's team arrives at the factory. They begin shooting, forcing one of the robots to jump off the cliff. The clockmaker refuses to obey the humans, and they shoot him. Conway retrieves his bio core. Conway also shoots at Cleo, but suddenly Jacques returns, and gunfire opens on his car. 
Jax continues driving straight at Conway, and during this time, Rachel manages to escape from the kidnappers. Injured, Jock deals with the team and hides on the factory premises. However, Conway finds him and accuses him of betraying his own people. I am not your people. Conway is ready to shoot Jock, but suddenly he is stopped by the Pilgrim's final creation, a beast-like robot that pushes him into the abyss. Jock aims his gun at the beast-like robot, not knowing what to expect, but suddenly they are interrupted by Rachel, who shows Jock their daughter. Clea watches the family reunion and then touches the child, soothing her. Jock helps Cleo and the beast-like robot cross to the other side. Cleo removes her mask, and they say goodbye to each other. Jock, Rachel, and their little daughter finally leave the desert and soon reach the coast, where a happy future surely awaits them. Do you think humanity will survive, or will the pilgrims take over the earth? Share your thoughts in the comments, give it a like, and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget that the best comments will be featured in the next video. Here's the best comment from the previous one. See you soon.